Welcome to a new video dedicated to simulating all computer architectures. Uh, today uh, we'll speak about simulating an uh, Intel 8008 uh, CPU. Uh, again, this will be a two-part video. I will start today with uh, some introduction to the Intel 8008 CPU. And in the next video I will present a Java-based implementation of the simulation. Uh, so, this uh, 8008 CPU was introduced in 1972. It was actually designed by the Computer Terminal Corporation, but it was implemented and manufactured by Intel. And uh, I've also included here uh, something about uh, this other series of CPUs. 4004, which was introduced actually in, a year earlier, in 1971. And uh, even after the introduction of the um, 8008, uh, Intel still worked on the 4004 series and uh, came out with uh, 4040 CPU in 1974. I've already covered these uh, two architectures in uh, previous videos, so please have a look at them. So, about this uh, 8008 CPU, it uh, ran at uh, 500 kilohertz, uh, so it was a bit slower than the 4004. Uh, however, uh, this is an 8-bit CPU, it works with 8-bit uh, data, which means, uh, in theory, it can perform twice as many uh, computations than uh, 4004. Of course, this depends on the application. Uh, and with uh, later versions, like 8008-1, uh, uh, the clock speed could be increased to uh, 800 uh, kHz. Uh, it offers a single bus for communicating with the outside world. This is an 8-bit bus compared to the 4-bit bus of the 4004 CPU. Uh, and uh, on this 8-bit bus, it allows uh, sending 14-bit addresses and 8-bit uh, uh, data transfers. You can see here a pinout of the 8008 CPU. So this is the single data bus. It also has an interrupt signal and uh, some pins uh, used for uh, communicating the CPU state to the outside world and of course clock signals. Um, so uh, it has 48 instructions in total and from the CPU data sheet uh, we notice that uh, it directly addresses uh, 16 kilobytes of memory, uh, RAM, ROM, or shift registers. So it's 16 kilobytes uh, due to the 14-bit uh, addresses. And the data sheet mentions that memory capacity can be indefinitely expanded through bag switching using I/O instructions. So, uh, what they mean here is that uh, you may implement a custom logic uh, that uses uh, I.O. instructions to change uh, the memory that uh, is available at these uh, 16 uh, kilobytes uh, of address space. So, you could, in theory, uh, change uh, part of this address space and make uh, another bank of memory available. Uh, now I'm not sure if this was actually used uh, in a real system, so if you know, please leave some comments. I'm really curious about this, uh, if it was only mentioned in the datasheet or actually used in real-world systems. Now, uh, if we look closely, uh, we see there is no pin indicating if uh, it's a memory access or an uh, I.O. operation. So, uh, how was this uh, separated? If we look at the instruction cycle, we notice 
that uh, in T1, uh, the CPU will send the lower 8 bits uh, of address, and in T2, uh, it will send the higher 6 bits of address. Okay, so 8 plus 6 means 14 bits, so that's all the address. And we still have uh, 2 bits remaining, and these are used uh, for control. So if we look now at this uh, cycle control coding, uh, this information is available from the CPU datasheet. Uh, we notice here that uh, uh, 1 in bit 6 and 0 in bit 7 uh, designates the data as a command uh, IO operation. Okay, so this is how it uh, makes a distinction between uh, um, IO and uh, memory. So, again, this is uh, a bit complex, uh, definitely requires some additional logic. On the other hand, it's uh, simpler compared to the 4004 series, where you had to have uh, special supporting ICs that were monitoring uh, the commands and were able to actually uh, execute commands and uh, for the 4004 supporting ICs you would also have uh, IO ports on uh, ROM chips so if this sounds too weird for you then please watch my previous videos about 4004 and 4004 uh, but uh, for the 8008 CPU, uh, this is more like a uh, modern uh, CPU where uh, the CPU actually indicates uh, when there is an I.O. operation. Of course, uh, external logic would have to combine the two bytes and create the address would have to decode this, uh, these uh, control bits and uh, uh, appropriately generate uh, chip selection signals for I.O. or memory. But overall it's uh, a much simpler design and uh, as I said looks more like uh, more modern uh, CPUs. So, uh, if we look uh, inside the CPU, I have here a block diagram. So, there is this uh, bus which handles uh, uh, IO from the CPU point of view. So, again, this can be memory or actual IO. Uh, there is this uh, arithmetic and logical unit. Uh, we have accumulator data registers, program counter, uh, stack, uh, and of course instruction decoding and control. Uh, so overall uh, the 8008 has 6 8-bit registers, uh, one 8-bit accumulator, uh, four CPU flags, uh, it supports an internal address stack uh, which uh, is formed of uh, eight 14 bit uh, registers, including the program counter, which allows nesting subroutines for up to seven levels. As I previously said, it offers 48 instructions, and this could be one byte, two bytes, or three bytes. Uh, here you can see uh, what's inside. Uh, one byte instructions, just an opcode, two byte instructions, uh, and three bytes, uh, three byte instructions. So these are mostly used for jump or call instructions. And these are uh, actual uh, examples of instructions from um, the data sheet. Uh, you can see here uh, a one byte instruction, which allows. Uh, loading a register from uh, another register. You can see here a uh, two-byte instruction where um, one register is loaded with an immediate value, an 8-bit value. And you can see here examples of uh, three uh, byte instructions. Okay. Uh, so, um, in this case, as it's mentioned here for the third byte uh, of this instruction, D6 and D7 are don't care bits. So, 
uh, you can set this to anything and it will uh, still uh, work as it should and you can also see it here they are marked with x so it can be uh, either zero or once and uh, it doesn't really matter uh, i also included here the input and output instructions uh, as you can see uh, there are only two such instructions uh, for example, the input instruction allows uh, reading the content of the selected input port into the accumulator. And uh, this uh, other instruction write the content of the accumulator into the selected output port. Okay. Uh, so in both cases the accumulator is involved. The CPU also uh, supports uh, HALT and uh, there are actually two opcodes for the HALT instruction uh, and uh, the CPU will remain HALTed until uh, an interrupt is received now about simulating uh, the CPU um, again like uh, in the previous uh, episodes where I spoke about simulating 2004 and 2040 uh, we have two options uh, to simulate uh, the CPU only or the CPU together with uh, additional logic so in this case support chips uh, is not something specific like in the 4004 but it can be uh, more uh, uh, let's say uh, standard logic uh, so, in the first case, uh, you can uh, start by writing uh, the program counter, uh, read the instruction, decode the instruction, then write the address with appropriate control bits. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the control bits, uh, bits 6 and 7, uh, will uh, specify if it's a memory operation or an I operation. Uh, then you, you would actually read, write, uh, data and uh, update uh, internal registers. Uh, in the second case, uh, if you support, uh, if you simulate the CPU with external logic, then you would uh, actually read an instruction from an address. Uh, you would decode it. You would uh, read write uh, data at a specific address. This can be either uh, on a memory bus or on an I/O bus. And you would finally update the registers. So again, uh, like in the case of 4004 or 4040, uh, it seems to be easier to simulate the CPU together with the external logic and have it implemented more like uh, modern CPU, where uh, you would have separate uh, buses for uh, memory and I/O and uh, you would simply call the appropriate uh, read or write uh, methods uh, from the simulation. In uh, the next part, uh, I will cover a Java-based simulation of the Intel 8008. Uh, in the meantime, uh, please check my project, uh, Java System Simulator, available at GitHub. Uh, and you can also check out some uh, simulations uh, using uh, 8008 and other CPUs. So, see you next time. Bye.